Hello everyone, welcome to Gebze Technical University Department of Bioengineering webinar series. Our guest for today's webinar is Dr. Mehdi Meran from uh, Üsküdar University. And the webinar title is Emerging Nanoparticles for Medical Application, Novel Methods and Techniques. Dear, uh, dear Dr. Mehdi Meran once completed his bachelor degree at Tabriz University and uh, Tabriz University Department of Chemistry in 2007 and he completed a polymer and chemical engineering department in Sahant University and chemical engineering in Istanbul Technical University respectively, respectively for master and PhD degree. Currently Dr. Meran has been working as an academician at Üsküdar University. Dear professor, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, Today in this presentation, I, I, I want to uh, share a topic about nanotechnologies and specifically in uh, nanoparticles. The topic of this presentation is, as you can see here, it is emerging nanoparticles for biomedical applications. Here we will learn novel methods and techniques. Okay, the outline of this presentation will start with an introduction to nanotechnology then we will come to nanoparticles in biomedical applications and uh, next step we will learn uh, novel uh, methods in, uh, in the fabrication of nanomaterials and finally I will share some uh, recent uh, research that we have conducted. When uh, we are going to uh, study nanoscale uh, material, here there is actually a very broad spectrum uh, that we are only on the uh, yellow rectangle. Here you can see it is nanoscopic. We are uh, we are living in macroscopic. Actually, uh, a little bit on the left. Of course, if we go uh, a little bit to the left, we will come to a very large range. It is in that range, we are in galactic. And on the right side, if we continue, we will reach to subatomic uh, range. However, here we are, uh, when we are talking about nanotechnology, we are actually uh, dealing with one billion of meter. Actually, uh, for the first time in 1959, uh, uh, this man, uh, Richard uh, Feynman, uh, in his famous speech uh, titled, uh, There is plenty of room at the bottom, an invitation to enter a new field of physics, that gave this speech to the uh, American Physical Society. Uh, this word nanotechnology for the first time uh, introduced to the uh, literature and that's why we call uh, uh, Richard Feynman uh, as the father of nanotechnology. To have an understanding about uh, a little bit more about nano. Here I put these three pictures that you can see here. You, I'm sure all of you are familiar with at least two of them, earth and football. The third one is called fullerin. It is a uh, uh, allotrope of uh, carbon. Uh, it, uh, it is a uh, composing of uh, 60 carbon atoms. It's uh, size, as you can see here, the diameter it is uh, approximately one nanometer. Okay, here the ratio, the size ratio of Earth to this football is approximately, approximately equal to the uh, size ratio of this football to the fullerin. Okay, so when we are talking about nano, you should uh, have an understanding about this scale. Okay, so 
this means that how tiny uh, world is nano. Here in this slide, uh, I put some pictures to uh, show you uh, what is nano in our daily life. Um, we are familiar with ruler, right? We used ruler in high school in our educational life. The um, smallest scale that we can use in ruler, you know, it is one millimeter, right? One millimeter we can use that uh, scale, okay? So nano is one millionth, one millionth of that one millimeter. So if you divide one millimeter to one million part, that will be the nano. Or human finger nails grows one nanometer ever, every uh, or each second. Or a uh, um, um, band's bird grow five uh, nanometers every second. And here on the right, uh, this uh, TM uh, micrograph shows the human hair, the uh, human hair, right? And on the human hair, there is a tiny uh, wire of silver. That uh, wire is uh, one nanometer. Okay. Okay, now uh, uh, we have some understanding about nano. Nano, actually, nanotechnology is very broad uh, spectrum. We, uh, as a, uh, chemical engineers or uh, as a material scientist, we are interested in nanoparticles. So we uh, look at th this perspective to nanotechnology spectrum. Here you can see the number of publications per year from uh, 1978 to uh, 2018. Uh, here uh, the blue uh, column shows the nanoparticle uh, publications per year and the orange one is uh, pertinent to nanoparticle plus medicine or medical. As you can see here, uh, there is a great amount of increase in the number of publications per year uh, from, uh, let's say, 1992, uh, 34, and so on. So this means that uh, nanotechnology, and in particular, nanoparticles hold great potential uh, in biomedical applications. Okay, now let's look at uh, the rank of nations. Uh, who is winning the nanoscience race? Here I found uh, this uh, statistics and, uh, uh, on the internet when I uh, uh, looked up the literature. As you can see here, uh, the nations and the number of publications, scientific publications in nanoscience from 1999 to 2014. And among these nations, Turkey, we are in 25 uh, rank. And of course, this statistic is not enough. Here on the right, top 10 nations that are ranked by impact here, uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, and United States are the three uh, countries that are leading the nanoscience. Okay, so far we uh, learned some uh, introduction about nanoparticles. Here you can see the scale of materials. We know macroscale materials in our daily lives. We are familiar with uh, microscale such as red blood cell, human hair, bacteria, and so on. And here, when we are going to talk about nanoparticles, actually we are in nanoscale. Here, 
uh, at the bottom of this picture, you can see different nanoparticles that have already uh, developed. Some of them are uh, commercialized. We can uh, buy in drug from drug stores, and some of them are in clinical phase. Uh, here, for example, liposomes are already uh, uh, commercialized. Or, and there are some other uh, nanoparticles that are in clinical phase. Uh, here uh, we have carbon nanotubes, dendrimer, polymeric nanoparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles with different uh, uh, size. And one thing that you should keep in mind uh, is that uh, when we are uh, dealing with a nanoparticle, that nanoparticle uh, should have at least one dimension, at least one dimension uh, below than 100 nanometer to be referred as nanoparticle. Otherwise, it is not nanoparticle, it is micro scale material or uh, we cannot uh, refer to uh, that material as a nanomaterial. Okay, here uh, at this point, when we are going to uh, fabricate or when we are going to design a, a material that is non-material and one step forward, then non-material uh, is for biomedical application, applications. Here, that non-material should meet some requirements, okay? So here, uh, you can see uh, some nanoparticles and their stability uh, inside water and buffer solution, uh, human serum, albumin, plasma, and blood. Because uh, as you can see here, the, their ra uh, hydrodynamic radius, or edge, uh, is changing. Uh, this is because uh, the interaction of uh, the nonmaterial that you fabricate for biomedical applications is uh, differing from uh, one media and to another media. That's why this is very important uh, factor, the stability of your nanoparticle uh, when you are uh, going to uh, design or fabricate uh, such a material because uh, if, uh, let's say for example in blood stream you know there are uh, different types of materials enzymes proteins minerals and uh, with different uh, surface chemistry and this will affect the uh, interaction of nanoparticle inside that uh, uh, blood stream or that medium with buffer or water. So that's why the integrity of uh, nanoparticle is of great importance. For example, here, when in this uh, picture, you, know, you can see a dual enzymatic reaction, assistant gem cytobine delivery system for pancreatic cancer. Here, we have layered a multi-layered uh, nanoparticle. The drug is encapsulated in that uh, nanoparticle. We know that, we uh, believe that the enzyme inside the uh, you know, pancreas uh, would uh, degrade the outer layers, okay? So we, that's why we design or we choose such materials, such a polymeric materials for this drug delivery system. And uh, we have knowledge about this uh, enzyme and we know their uh, interaction with uh, different types of polymers. So that enzyme degrades the outer layer of this nanoparticle and finally this drug released from this nanoparticle to the uh, site specific uh, part uh, 
here, pan, uh, pancreas. Uh, so that's why sometimes it is uh, advantage uh, uh, such a enzymatic uh, reaction for us. Sometimes it is a drawback for us because we should consider the stability from one side. On the other side, there is a corrosion, uh, biological corrosion uh, uh, that uh, our nanoparticle is exposed. Okay, I don't want to exp uh, ex uh, spend much more time on the introduction part, but uh, when we are going to uh, design uh, a nanomaterial or nanoparticle for biomedical applications, there are different factors. Uh, its size, its uh, shape, its uh, binding affinity, and uh, uh, and material that you choose for your nanoparticle uh, play key role on the. Uh, uh, if efficiency of that uh, delivery system. Here, there are some terms, for example, here, passive and active targeting, and uh, also the de uh, development of a protein corona uh, uh, outside or perimeter of your uh, nanoparticle. These are terms that we should know uh, when we are going to uh, design a nanoparticle for biomedical applications. This biomedical applications, and uh, sometimes it is imaging, it, uh, sometimes it is a therapy purpose, uh, but at the end of the day, we are going to use that material uh, for biomedical factors and that uh, parameters should meet all of the requirements for uh, for uh, successful nonparticle uh, or non carrier delivery system. Here in this slide, I put uh, this figure: and uh, FDA approved cancer therapeutics. Uh, all of them here are liposomes, in that you can uh, easily find. Uh, uh, in uh, drug stores, uh, these are uh, most of them are doxorubicin or uh, another derivative of doxorubicin. It is done uh, in or other uh, uh, anti-cancer drugs that uh, here used or the scientists used liposomal. Uh, types of nanoparticles for uh, for the therapy purpose. Uh, from 1995 to 2017, here the timeline of the approval of these nanocarriers you can see here. And as I said, uh, shape and size play a, a vital role in the effective, effectiveness of uh, the drug delivery system or in general nanoparticle for biomedical applications. As you can see here on the right, uh, we have uh, four different types of nanoparticle, uh, uh, just their shapes are different. Uh, rods and spheres, these are gold nanoparticles. Particle. As you can see here, they uh, completely uh, behave differently. So this means that uh, the drug release depends on the size of the nanoparticle and the shape of the nanoparticle. And of course, route of administration is another factor that we should uh, consider in drug delivery uh, system or or any nanoparticles that you uh, consider for biological systems or for humans to improve the life standard. 
and here the roots and nasal uh, types of drug delivery. If you want to uh, develop such a uh, nanoparticle, you should be aware of different uh, layer by layer barriers that your nanoparticle should overcome all of these nano, uh, uh, barriers, not nano, bar not nano, I mean barriers, to be efficient uh, in uh, its role. Okay, here uh, in this particles, so coal and nanoparticles uh, are one of the most uh, or widely studied uh, nanoparticles for uh, biomedical applications. Uh, that's why I put here some examples for uh, gold nanoparticles. Here in this study, uh, the researchers used gold for uh, cancer uh, therapy here they used its optical property optical property of gold to uh, uh, induce cell death uh, by uh, uh, increasing the temperature that is called uh, hyperthermia okay here the timeline of gold nanoparticles that are in clinical uh, phases uh, different types of uh, nanoparticles here in, we can sometimes we use a, a nanoparticle itself sometimes we use a combination of nanoparticles to uh, uh, to develop uh, optimized nanoparticle. That's why here you can see silicon nanoparticle with gold shell. Okay, so uh, we have silicon nanoparticle plus gold uh, nanoparticle that is coated with another uh, polymer. Here one of the most uh, used polymers that, that is FDA approved polymer. It is polyethylene glycol that we can uh, find in most of the drugs, uh, this polymer provides uh, by compatibility to the uh, nanoparticles. Iron oxide is another uh, nanoparticle. Uh, here on the right, you can see uh, magnetic nanoparticles. Here, uh, iron oxide uh, is placed inside the lipid bilayer uh, and we can use this kinds of nanoparticles for imaging purpose or for uh, therapy purpose. So here uh, for site specific uh, therapy purpose we can use non uh, magnetic nanoparticles uh, by uh, applying alternating magnetic field we can uh, target uh, the nanoparticles to the uh, desired uh, destination and by uh, using uh, different uh, methods at the same time uh, we can uh, you we can be successful in uh, removing the cancer cells from the body okay Carbon-based nanomaterials or nanoparticles are uh, another important uh, parts of uh, nanoparticles for biomedical applications. And here it is better to know that nanoparticles uh, are also uh, comprise a spectrum. So that's why I uh, try to give some examples from different nanoparticles. Here we have different types of mm, mm, carbon-based nanoparticles uh, with 3D, 2D, uh, 1D and 0D uh, structures. Fulgurant, we are familiar so far with fulgurant, carbon 60. Uh, 
here on their uh, left on the corner. Uh, this is uh, Zerouti, uh, an allotrope of carbon. On the right side, we have carbon nanotubes with uh, one dimensional uh, structure. And of course, we have graphite, we have graphene and diamond and so on. Carbon nanotubes, because of their uh, unique properties, play an important role in the development of uh, nanoparticles for biomedical applications. Here we have diff uh, different types, uh, single wall, multi wall, single wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, also have different classifications, armchair, zigzag, chiral, as you can see here on the uh, right and on the left, uh, their structures. Here in this slide, you can see uh, metallic and uh, uh, it's TM micrograph. Uh, the direction of twisting here will give you the chirality of that carbon uh, nanotube. Here it is metallic and this one is semi-conducting uh, single wall carbon nanotube using here uh, STM, starting uh, tunneling uh, um, microscopy, we can easily uh, uh, we can easily understand the uh, shape, the morphology, and the, uh, more specifically the chirality of these nano-sized um, materials. And one thing that uh, it is better to know about carbon nanotubes, uh, some of them are uh, metallic, so it uh, 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 conducts electricity, and uh, uh, these materials have also good uh, thermal properties. Some of them are semiconducting. This is because of uh, the band gap that you can see here, the band gap between conduction and valence band. And of course, these materials have great tensile strength uh, or good, let's say, good mechanical properties. When we uh, compare with the conventional uh, nanomaterials, that's why uh, these materials, these carbon nanotubes, uh, are used uh, in composites, in nanocomposites. In badminton racket, um, and baseball bats, and tennis rackets, because of its lightweight, its strength, and bigger sweet spot. Here in this table, uh, I put for comparison of different uh, carbon allotropes. In terms of uh, properties, it's hardness, tensile strength, conducts heat and electricity. Uh, as you can see here, carbon nanotubes uh, are uh, kind of materials that uh, hold great potential, not only for biomedical applications, uh, other uh, industries. Uh, in biomedical applications, these materials are used for imaging purpose, carbon nanotubes, I mean, uh, and for uh, therapy purpose. So that's why we can consider uh, these materials for uh, biomedical applications. Here you can see the current clinical applications of carbon nanomaterials uh, among uh, various allotropes of carbon, mater carbon materials, just nanodiamond and nanotube are in clinical trails. Uh, here, for example, in the case of nanotube, uh, uh, 
these nanomaterials are uh, used for imaging, biological imaging, as a biosensor for drug delivery and gene delivery purposes. And of course, uh, for nanodiamond, we can consider uh, its application here. Here, quantum dots. size uh, in nanoscale and uh, 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 these materials are very sensitive to the uh, light and that's why uh, we can consider these materials for uh, for biomedical applications so that's why I put this uh, here uh, pH uh, induced drug delivery system using carbon and uh, using quantum dots and uh, quantum dots uh, are uh, made from metallic uh, in uh, metallic um, materials purpose okay so far we uh, learn some information and now we have knowledge about uh, nanotechnology then we focus on uh, uh, some uh, parameters that uh, affects the, the performance of nanomaterial then we dive into the, uh, different types of nanomaterials and finally we are here in this uh, part, uh, there are different fabrication methods, conventional methods for uh, nanomaterials. Uh, colloidal methods are uh, one of the uh, most uh, used and uh, easy methods for uh, developing of nano size nano size materials both for organic and inorganic uh, i put here just gold uh, here uh, as an example uh, here uh, this is a colloidal uh, gold nanoparticles that we usually use uh, hydrogen uh, tetra uh, chlora rate with sodium uh, citrate then we use uh, this citrate to reduce uh, uh, gold uh, cation to produce uh, gold nanoparticles this is the uh, protocol for uh, for fabrication of gold nanoparticles here if the, you want to obtain spherical nanoparticle or if you want to have nanorods, as you can see here, the size and the shape, so far we learned the size and shape affects the uh, efficiency of nanoparticle. That's why here at this step, by uh, adding some uh, surfactants to the uh, media we can uh, control the shape of the uh, fabricated nanoparticles if you if you want a spherical you can add the, uh, the required surfactants to obtain the czar uh, nanoparticle okay uh, here uh, it's time to study uh, or learn uh, the new methods in developing uh, mm, nanoparticles for biomedical applications. Here, uh, microfluidic techniques. Uh, there are two approach: top-down approach or bottom-up approach. 
in bottom up uh, approach actually we start with molecules and we assemble these molecules to obtain uh, this, uh, super mole uh, molecular structure and uh, this will uh, give us at the end the desired nanoparticle. So we build the blocks to obtain the desired nanoparticle. On the other side or on the opposite side, it is top-down approach. Here we have a, a large-scale material. Okay, we chop down uh, that uh, material. We uh, divide to small pieces to obtain the desired nanoparticle with uh, given uh, size. So these are two different approaches. And uh, here on the uh, left, uh, there are advantages of this microfluidic systems uh, that you can see here. Uh, it is uh, uh, simple to operate. Uh, we can uh, produce uniform uh, structure in terms of size and shape. Uh, this is not possible in conventional methods uh, of producing nanoparticles. That's why uh, microfluidic uh, techniques are, uh, are uh, great uh, techniques to produce uh, a very uniform uh, nanoparticles. Here, the pipeline of the uh, microfluidics for drug delivery system. Uh, here, mm, we are uh, going to focus on the drug delivery system of this microfluidic system, microfluidic uh, techniques. You know, in each uh, uh, study, it is not uh, specific to the nanoparticles. You should come up with an idea. Then, uh, in the next step in this uh, pipeline, uh, you develop a nanoparticle using the microfluidic systems. Then, you uh, need, similar to the conventional methods, you need to characterize the developed or fabricated uh, nanoparticle. Here, uh, if you uh, the, uh, if you are successful in uh, in this uh, until this part, you will enter to the preclinical study. Here, uh, microfluidic uh, techniques provide a, a great platform for us to. Uh, real-time uh, follow and scan the uh, uh, the mm, interactions of nanoparticle with biological system, and that is uh, that system or that platform is called organ on a chip or uh, uh, lab on a chip. If you are uh, uh, if you are successful at this step, of course you scale up the process, and finally you uh, will enter to the clinical uh, phase. Okay, here are the, some microfluidic techniques. Uh, we will start with flow focusing. Of course, there are different types: microwards, template, assembly and flow, uh, just a moment please, uh, yeah, a droplet formation, flow, lithography, and chaotic mixing. Oh, these are mm, most common uh, techniques, microfluidic techniques for the fabrication of different types of nanoparticles that are placed in the one of nanoparticles, organic, inorganic, polymerics, metallics and so on. 
Okay, in flow focusing method, uh, flow focusing method, we have uh, three flow with different velocities, with different speeds, I mean. And uh, when uh, the diffusion is governing your process, you use this method, uh, focusing method. Here on the left, and sorry, on the right, you can see an example for flow focusing. We have three uh, input for flow, uh, flow of different materials, okay, A, B, C. And uh, at the uh, bottom, you can see uh, uh, TM micrograph. Here we produce, or actually not we, the scientists, the researchers produce uh, very uniform in terms of size and shape of uh, polymeric nanoparticles here, uh, polylactic glycolic acid uh, uh, and uh, polyethylene glycol. Of course, if your uh, materials does not uh, meet the requirement, you can choose another method here, micro vortices uh, or temple, uh, template assembly. In micro vortices, we use a uh, higher Reynolds number. Reynolds number, you, know, you may know, uh, 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 it shows the ratio of inertial forces to the uh, uh, viscous forces. When inertial forces are um, more, uh, eff uh, more effective in your uh, flow, here you, you may choose microvortices to uh, produce uh, your nanoparticle. Here in this uh, slide on the right, you can see uh, this micro vortices method that is used for the production of uh, poly. Uh, it is actually hybrid uh, uh, not a particle. It, it is uh, uh, lipid. It has lipid power and polymer power. Uh, as you can see at the bottom uh, for uh, different Reynolds numbers, we can we can have different nanoparticle size. As uh, the Reynolds number increases, uh, we have a very uh, small in. In uh, template assembly, we use uh, we, yeah, by using this method, we can produce layer by layer nanoparticles. Which, uh, if you can remember, we said that uh, inside the blood stream, in blood stream, there are different types of materials. Their binding affinity are different, and their interaction with the uh, surface of the nanoparticles. Uh, will be different, and this will affect, affect the, uh, the efficiency of another particle. Here, template assembly uh, gives the op this opportunity for us to uh, produce uh, layer by layer another particle. I mean, one layer from one polymer, one layer from another particles, and so on. So. Uh, this method is very uh, helpful in producing the uh, layer. Here we have two different phases uh, in uh, droplet formation method, I mean. Uh, two different phases that are immiscible and we have a this uh, discrete uh, flow of polymer, or let's say any particle that you have. Uh, this uh, flow uh, of because uh, polymer enters to the uh, another phase, and if you have uh, enough control over this flow, you can produce and the desired materials with desired uh, 
size. Here on the right, you can see very uniform structure for uh, uh, for uh, this types of uh, fabrication method. Flow lithography is another types of uh, microfluidic techniques. Uh, in this time, we uh, should have uh, poly uh, I mean, we should have a light sensitive polymer. Uh, and uh, here the picture is projected uh, on the surface of the polymer and uh, by uh, using UV light we can uh, of course the, your polymer should be for a curable we can produce the desired shape uh, using this technique in a chaotic mixing we uh, use different geometry different geometry patterns to uh, provide the desired mixing for uh, our uh, nonparticles. Uh, sometimes it is, uh, in, it is very vital uh, parameter for us to produce very homogeneous nonparticle. Here, chaotic mixing provides that opportunity for us. Here, uh, uh, th there is a drug delivery system that uh, is produced using this uh, technique. Okay, here, uh, actually I don't know if I have enough time. Uh, here in these slides, I put a comparison between conventional and uh, modern techniques for, for example, uh, in the, uh, the production of polymeric nanoparticles, solvent uh, evaporation is a conventional method here on the right uh, rectangles, uh, green and red. You can see the advantages and disadvantages of this method. Using the hydrodynamic flow focusing, the first method that we uh, learn, uh, we can produce very uh, uniform uh, here I mean uh, in terms of size as you can see if you compare with the uh, conventional method we can produce uh, uh, nanoparticles with size smaller than 100 nanometers this is an, uh, the, these are another uh, techniques microfluidic Tesla mixer here we should uh, design uh, a very complex geometric to provide the desired mixing. Another method is flash and then a pre precipitation. Uh, here we use uh, the flow hydrodynamics uh, uh, to produce uh, the desired nanoparticles. That's why we should uh, have knowledge about fluid mechanics and here for inorganic nanoparticles, a comparison between uh, bulk mixing and microfluidic droplet uh, mixing that we learned so far, uh, droplet uh, mixing uh, and the advantages. The disadvantage of the microfluidic sometimes uh, is that uh, it is. to produce uh, mass production of that material. That's why sometimes some methods for some uh, nanoparticles, microfluidic techniques uh, is not the solution. However, if you want to have uh, very uniform materials with the desired property here, microfluidic systems is for you. And as I said, here uh, after the fabrication, we are in characterization. Uh, we should characterize actually using different uh, instruments or different techniques to characterize the fabricated nanoparticles. Here, microfluidic techniques provide great potential 
such as real-time imaging, or you can you can produce organ and you can produce uh, you know, specific uh, uh, tissues of an organ on uh, on a chip that is called organ on a chip, or you can choose some uh, cell lines on the uh, on the uh, microfluidic platforms. Uh, which is called lab on uh, on chip, uh, and you, uh, you can easily and uh, in a real time imaging manner, you can uh, screen the uh, the whole process from the beginning. This is, uh, I believe, this will open up a great uh, opportunity and will open up an avenue for. Uh, in the near future, I mean, uh, for the treatment of different types of uh, cancers uh, using microfluidic platforms. Okay, uh, in this part, I will share in brief some of the recent studies that I uh, that um, uh, I and our uh, colleagues. Uh, were made in this area of nanotechnology, I mean nanoparticles. Here we uh, used uh, nano, uh, the nanoparticle single wall carbonate tubes for uh, a therapy purpose. Uh, so we start with uh, fabrication of single wall carbon nanotubes, then we uh, Characterize that carbon nanotubes, different carbon nanotubes characterized uh, using different methods, and then we uh, used non covalent uh, coating of this nanoparticle uh, to be uh, useful, to be uh, applicable for uh, biomedical applications. Here you can see the TM micrographs for uh, the fabricated single wall carbon nanotubes. Here we used SHOR, we, in brief, we uh, referred as SHOR and long uh, single wall carbon nanotubes. Here uh, we used different uh, characterization techniques. Then we uh, started in with in vitro cytotoxicity studies. Uh, at first step, we uh, normally we should start with pristine single wall carbon nanotubes or carbon nanotubes that does not have any uh, coating. Here, uh, I forgot to say that we use polyethylene glycol uh, to coat our carbon nanotubes. In this slide, we just use pristine single wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, I mean, there is no uh, coating uh, for for the single wall carbon nanotubes. We used different MTT, different uh, uh, cell viability tests, MTT and WST1, and the results showed uh, for short and long uh, carbon nanotubes that yeah these materials are uh, toxic materials for the cells. Now here we uh, introduce or we coated our carbon nanotubes, both short and long, with a longer, uh, let's say not longer, shorter here, because we will come to longer uh, polyethylene glycol, with shorter uh, polymer. And we uh, observe that, yeah, this um, type of coating is successful in Introducing the biocompatibility. Of course, we cannot say that this material is biocompatible, but yeah, we are in the right direction of producing the desired nanoparticles. Here, for a little bit higher uh, molecular weight of polyethylene glycol, we uh, got uh, better result both for short and long, but uh, similar to to 1,000, 
five times and uh, show that uh, these nanoparticles uh, can uh, obtain biocompatibility, particularly short carbon nanotubes. As you can see, in cell viability for different doses of these nanoparticles. And we use higher molecular rate of uh, polyethylene glycol for coding of these single wall carbonate tubes. Uh, this step, we can say that some of them may be uh, uh, holds great potential for biomedical applications. And also, uh, we uh, synthesized a branch peg. Uh, to code uh, uh, or to modify the surface uh, of the carbon nanotubes. And at this step, we say that, yeah, uh, branch peg uh, and, of course, short carbon nanotubes uh, are uh, kind of nanoparticles that can be used for in vivo studies. Here, the result for confocal uh, fluorescence microscopy uh, showed uh, the uh, same or inconsistent uh, with the results of cytotoxicity. Uh, and this is the paper that we published so far. And as I said before, the, we start with short carbon nanotubes that uh, not long carbon nanotubes, short carbon nanotubes that are coated with polyethylene glycol for in vivo studies. Here, our goal is to uh, find blood circulation time for the, the fabricated nanoparticles and inconsistent with the result of uh, cytotoxic uh, studies. Uh, here, uh, in vivo studies exhibited that yeah, branch peg and high molecular weight uh, polyethylene glycol uh, provide uh, higher weight compatibility. And as you can see here, uh, for branch peg or uh, the right column, the right rectangle, I mean, uh, is for branch peg after approximately 13 hours, uh, the, this material is removed from the uh, blood stream of mice. Then we uh, use folic acid for uh, target delivery and we use docs for uh, drug delivery uh, platform for long and short here and why for long because we want to have a uh, control or we want we want to have a comparison point for our result and here the drug release performance for the uh, fabricated nanoparticles in neutral pH and in acidic pH, you, you know, uh, the uh, cancer uh, microenvironment uh, is acidic. That's why we have chosen this pH. And these results also are, are inconsistent with the results of in vivo and in vitro. Uh, I mean, branch peg and high molecular weight of polyethylene glycol. Uh, are uh, suitable for our uh, nanoparticles. This is the paper. Then we decided to use another uh, anchor molecule to uh, code our carbon nanotubes. Uh, here we used uh, FMOC bearing different types of amino acids. And of course, uh, I forgot to say that uh, in parallel with experimental studies, we, uh, our group, uh, conducted in silico studies. Here, the fabricated uh, nanovectors, 
and this is the uh, publication for this bar. And I think this is enough for this presentation. Thank you for your listening. I am here if you have any questions. Thank you, Thank Professor, you Professor, sir, for your for impressive, impressive presentation. presentation. Sorry. 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 And and Dear past uh, if there is any questions about the presentation, please ask right now. You could raise your hand to ask. Better you can ask. Of course. There you go. Better your voice is close. We don't hear you. Peter, could you open your voice? Okay, I open now. Uh, thank you very much, Mehdi Hocam, uh, for your uh, informative and detailed presentation. On, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to ask a question about uh, you uh, mentioned about uh, graphene uh, and I'm studying on graphene uh, nanoparticles and I uh, you also mentioned about the cytotoxicity tests of uh, single walled carbon nanotubes. Uh, do you have any information about uh, graphene nanoparticles uh, cytotoxicity uh, results or do you have any uh, study about uh, cytotoxicity uh, results of uh, graphene nanoparticles? Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, at the moment we are working on graphene and graphene oxide. Uh, of course, and graphene is also uh, uh, sort of toxic or uh, mm -hmm. it depends on its size. Uh, it can mm -hmm. be uh, 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 developed sort of toxicity. So that's why here you should, uh, similar to uh, most of the nanoparticles mm -hmm. uh, and uh, particularly uh, carbon nanotubes, you should uh, code here, uh, code meaning non-covalent functional, functionalization, or you may uh, use uh, chemical modification mm -hmm. of the surface of uh, graphene. Here, of course, you may use different types of polymers that uh, are biodegradable and biocompatible polymers. So. Uh, the answer is yes, these materials are uh, probably, most probably are cytotoxic. So uh, if you say that, uh, you know, this material is not cytotoxic, you should approve with in, vi in vitro and in vivo studies. Thank you very much for your detailed uh, response. Thank you. It's no big deal. Is there any question? Okay, mm. thank you, Professor, for your attendance and your presentation. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, it's a pleasure for me, and I really thank you, uh, Professor Burish, for uh, providing such a uh, great opportunity for me, and thank you, you as well. Thank you. Okay, we can end our webinar program for today. Okay. Uh, have a nice day. Goodbye. Have a nice day.